Hi everyone, it's Rob Cosman, and I want to show you today how one simple journal entry trick to book your Amazon sales correctly each month in Zero. So I've been doing this for a while in uh, QuickBooks, and I figured I should do it on Zero since I have some clients that use Zero, and there's a lot of people out there that do use Zero as well. So um, what this is, it's a method that I, I've kind of come up with just to do a manual journal entry to correctly record your Amazon sales and FBA fees. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of just recording their sales as the actual amount that ends up in their bank account, which is not correct because really you've sold a bunch of items and then you had FBA fees and you really need to correctly record, you know, the, the gross sales less the FBA fees and refunds and shipping and advertising and all that jazz. So what I did <clears throat> to try to avoid, you know, buying fancy plugins that cost, you know, 60, $80 a month, um, I came up with a method that would just allow for one journal entry uh, per marketplace. So if you sell on dots, dot com, you do one if you sell on .ca you can do another vice versa just make sure your currency is right but what this will take into account is just basically your total sales and FBA fees for one month now I'm not going to cover um, if you have taxes that you've collected and need to remit or you're doing the marketplace facilitator so that'll be on the sheet and I'll leave everybody up to that but I mean this is one easy method and what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to book everything and you're basically going to set up an account receivable from Amazon and then when the transfers and your your money comes into your account during the month whether you get paid every two weeks whether you're one of those unicorns get daily payments um, or you request payments then when those money comes in you can just apply it against you know from your bank you match it up to that AR account because what's always going to happen is people are going to have different cutoff times and depending on if your sales are up or down you know your, your accounts receivable from Amazon could increase or decrease so I, I use this transfers account that I'm going to show you um, to kind of balance that out okay so to start with you go into seller central and you go to reports and you go to payments and you go select date range and then there's a button that says generate report click on that and you can pick summary and you can pick summary for whatever month that you're doing so in this example I've done March and I've showed you how it's all done because no one wants to see me sit here and, and punch them all in but I'm gonna show you how I did so you get this one page PDF summary and I'll bring one over and show you here so this is what we're gonna enter okay so as you can see this side here is all the income amounts you know your sales less refunds and everything like that don't worry about these negatives because these are it's going to be set up debits and credits so you don't need to put the negative it's just a debit okay these are all the expenses this is the tax stuff I'm not going to worry about like in this one um, this data here this person is just collecting and then using the marketplace facilitator so it's really just in and out so who really cares um, and then you're going to have the transfers to the bank so this is the amount of money that actually transferred through to the bank I'm gonna put that in because it might have come in one two three four all kinds of payments we don't know I'm gonna put that in and then to make the entry balance I'm gonna put a plug figure and that's basically gonna increase or decrease my account receivable from Amazon resulting in the differences in cutoff like that last payment could have been on you know this is March it could have been like March 28th it could have been March 20th who knows right like everybody's gonna have difference so this method will kind of account for that and that balancing out so what I did was I went in if you go under the plus here and then you can select um, create a manual journal and it's gonna come up to this screen so this one's already been posted uh, but I'll show you if I like try to edit it if you go post a manual journal this is what's gonna come up you get it like this I like to put in but you know like the, the, the month of the sales um, I always just pick the last day of the month it's just easier like this is March so we picked March 31st and then you know you put in your description and then you select each account here um, depending on what description lines up so you click on it and you can either select it from the drop down or if you start typing it it's gonna find it we will put tax exempt because I'm not taking into account sales taxes here and whatnot um, because everything is just this is manual journal entry so I just want to put all these amounts in and all I did was I went through and I mirrored that whole report as I said here's the 14 here's the actual transfer so I just I do it on two lines just to kinda keep things clear in my mind this is the actual amounts that came in this could have been on two transfers some months it's three um, but this amount is there and then the balanced because you want all your debits and credits to balance is this plug figure so in this case the total my accounts receivable is actually going up that Amazon still owes me another 499 right so every month you know 
you could, depending on what your sales are and your payment cutoffs, and if your sales are increasing or decreasing or whatnot, this might flip to the other side. It could be a credit, it could be a debit. Don't know. You just have to kind of see how it shakes out. Um, so this I'm going to post. So I've, I've done all that. I put the entry in, um, posted it. So now we've got it here. It's posted. You can see all here. Uh, but then what you can do is once you've already done this once, you can go up here and you just copy it and it'll make a copy of the same thing. So if you went through and, you know, like chances are you're going to use the exact same accounts almost every time, maybe one or two, you might have something in some sort of promotional rebate or, or whatnot. But, you know, once you've kind of done it, then you can just copy, paste it, change the date, change the descriptions, you know, instead of March, it'll be April and kind of move forward that way. Then if you want to see, we go to... Uh, no, you want to go to look at our profit and loss here. Sorry, I clicked on it right first time. And if we look at, because we did that last month, again, this is all just demo data. As you can see, demo company. Now you can see I've got, okay, here comes the in here's the income, and here's all the income amounts. I got... Uh, product sales, some refunds, some other rebates, miscellaneous sales, you know, 28. And then my cost of goods sold. Um, in here, I have all the different various FBA fees. And now you have one month's journal, very simple in here. Now, when I did this, again, I've used my chart of accounts, which I created, and you can purchase. There's a link down in the description. Um, but I've used that chart of accounts to mirror the summary. It just makes everything so much easier and so quick. And if you buy the chart of accounts, I also have a video of how to upload it and how to set them up. And then you simply mirror that one journal entry a month. I mean, you can basically send the video to your VA and have them do it. It's super simple. It saves you, you know, the time for, you know, get some fancy plugin um, that'll import all these different transactions. And it's a nightmare if it messes up. Very easy one journal entry. So I hope that helps. And again, if it does, be sure to grab my chart of accounts.